And welcome back to another edition of Maddie's Rap. I'm your host, the multiple award winning author, Matt D. Talford, author of a couple of amazing books that I will tell you about at the end of this video. Because today, I want to jump right into some sensitive subject matter and I want to try to keep this video quick. Now, today I humbled myself. I did not say this was going to be a quick video because if y'all have been watching me for a while, you know what happens when I say it's going to be a quick video. Today, I humbled myself and said, I'm going to try to make this a quick video. So, um, give a quick shout out before we get started. Shout out to those of you who are returning subscribers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The channel continues to grow and it is because of you all. You all commenting, watching the videos, subscribing, liking them, sharing them with your friends and talking about them in general. It is so important to discuss the subject matter, subject matter that you kind of will only find on Maddie's Rap because I haven't seen anybody else going in on these topics like this, but I'm not here trying to blow myself up. But I do want you to talk about this subject matter because it's important. You guys know I'm here to reveal and uncover the spirituality and the truth in scripture that has been hidden for way too long. Okay, so, and if you're new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you will consider subscribing. Doesn't cost you a thing. All you got to do is click that subscribe button and slide that notification bell up to all so that you'll be notified when I upload new content. Now, today's subject matter, again, is going to be a little bit sensitive and it's going to be, you know, some people are going to be like, well, who does he think he is? I don't care. <laughs> we dealing with it. What's the subject matter, Matt? Let me stop holding y'all up. It's a little passage of scripture that I personally feels like should never have even been included in the Bible. Now, whoa, back up, right? I know that's controversial. Some of you will say, well, you know, you know what it says in the end, uh, you know, anybody who takes or anybody who adds to this, uh, the plagues will be added to them. And, and anybody that takes away from it, there's going to be uh, their parts going to be taken out of the book. of life. I personally think that part was a curse. Honestly, I think it was a curse. I think that in and of itself was a curse and a spell because the same people that put that into scripture, there's other parts of scripture that did not make the 66 book canon. All right. So you left something out. What's going to happen to you? See what I'm saying? So now let me get back to that. What are we talking about, Matt? Ephesians 5 and 22. All right. Ephesians 5 and 22 and talking about submission, being a submissive wife. Okay. Um, before I read that passage of scripture, I want to tell you that today's video was inspired by, um, a YouTuber that I've been following for a while. I don't watch all these videos anymore cause I'm so busy, but I do look at the headers when they come up in my recommended videos and today grabbed my attention. Why? Because today <laughs> his video had to deal with the relationship between a, uh, a, an Instagram personality that I've followed for a while. Uh, Jasmine Brown. If you guys are familiar with her or if you aren't, you can look her up on Instagram. Her Instagram handle is at watch Jazzy and I'll put it on the screen for you. So the relationship between Jasmine Brown and one of my favorite quarterbacks and uh, athletes, Cam Newton. OK, so the uh, the title of that video was uh, Cam Newton, new girlfriend, Jazzy Brown is submissive AF. And guess who's mad? I'll put a link to um, O'Shea Jackson's uh, YouTube channel in the description box so you guys can check them out and I'll also include a link to that video um, so that you all can check it out but I'm going to play a clip of that conversation and then I'm gonna read a passage of scripture this conversation actually sparked a conversation between me and my wife this morning and I told her look it's time that people hear the real from a man from a real man okay um, I don't know and that's not that's not to uh, you know throw shade on any of the original authors of the Bible but um I personally have some some feelings about that passage of scripture in Ephesians 5 and 22 that I'll read in a minute that I've had for a while now and today I'm letting it out of the bag okay so this is completely unscripted um I did not plan this those of you who watched me for a while you know that I tend to record and drop new videos or new content on Fridays and Sundays I didn't drop anything this past Sunday I just kind of just took a chill stayed home and rested today and now in between friday and sunday if something inspires me i'm going to jump on it today i'm going to jump on this i'm going to play this clip and take a short break and then when i come back i'm going to go into why i think that that is one of the worst pieces of scripture in the bible and how negatively it has affected our community now y'all know i don't say black if you want to know why i don't i don't like to say black or identify myself as black or call my fellow tribesmen and tribes women black 
go check out my video on what simple bags of flour can teach us about race all right let me play this clip we're going to take a short break and then i'll come back and I'll, I'll read some scripture i'll give you the contrast and then i'll close this video out some people are always gonna have problems with what a black man wants what a black man wants what are we talking about because when the black men have standards it is always a problem but see there are women out there that are going to go ahead on and do that for you as long as you are the right man and cam newton is the right man he's been in league mvp he's a successful business owner um he's still going to be playing in the nfl and he knows what his value is on the market so he's going to demand that now i want to talk about this particular girlfriend of his her name is jasmine jazzy brown and she is trending so much on social media even some of you guys sent me emails about her email sign up email and she's been outright um you know just outspoken about how she's spoiling cam newton and what her role is as a woman in the relationship for him and this clip is getting people so pissed off Check her out on Instagram, guys. But Dima, let's go ahead and play that clip. Relationships and submission and being submissive is like, it's like an eight count. Know that dance. You better know that five, five, six, seven, eight. One, dishes clean. Two, laundry. Three, whatever. Like, whatever that is to you, own what that is. I can only say what it is to me. But you, if you have a long day and you fight in the world, you would never come back and fight me. You would never come back and walk into a space that is not welcoming you do you think that this is controversial in some capacity absolutely to some it could be enabling you know and someone told me one time they're like you're enabling him and i told him how that made me feel and he was like of course they're gonna say that they don't have nobody doing that for them how did it make you feel it made me feel like maybe i am but at the same time that's my love so if you don't understand it, you know, it's not, I'm not loving on you for you to get it. That's, that's how I love. And whoever I love is going to get that benefit. All right. So that was uh, Jasmine Brown on her relationship with Cam Newton and her love style in general. Acts of service uh, is what that sounds like. Now I'm an acts of service guy, so I get it. I, I completely get where she's coming from. Um, but that being said, I'm going to take a short break. And then I'm going to go in on what I feel like is one of the biggest challenges to our community, our tribe. And that challenge comes from this whole word submission as presented in the Bible. I'm going to read that passage of scripture from Ephesians 5 and 22. There's a cross reference in the book of Colossians that pretty much says the same thing. But I'll deal with Ephesians 5 and 22. And then I'm going to give you a contrast. I'm going to tell you what I think is wrong with that. I'm going to I'm going to read Ephesians 5 and 22. I'm going to tell you what I think is wrong with that passage of scripture and how it has been so detrimental to our community. And it has everything to do with that big E word expectations. OK, how it's been so detrimental to our families and our communities. And then I'm going to show you the contrast, which is found in the Old Testament. And then I want to hear from you guys what your thoughts are on that terrible word submission after this short break you're watching maddie's rap with author matt d talford welcome back to maddie's rap with author matt d talford and um you guys that saw the introduction there you know what we're about to do next we're about to go in on this scripture let's read that passage of scripture from ephesians 5 and 22 let's read that right now okay here we go ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Verse 23 goes on to say, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Verse 24, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, my problem with that passage of Scripture is it has been and you know what i should have said this in the introduction but i'm gonna say it right now so for those of you that have kids watching this you may want to turn this part off because 
I'm going to use a little bit of French. It's not going to be advanced French, okay? It'll be basic French, all right? So French meaning adult language for those of you that don't get the moniker, okay? Um, I'm going to be using some mild adult language here because I need to let this out and express it the way I feel it, okay? It is one thing for a father to help raise his daughter. It is one thing for a mother to raise her son, okay? Notice I didn't say help because what we have sometimes is we got two parent households and sometimes we got one parent households and typically speaking those one parent households are mothers. So I didn't say help because a lot of times the moms are doing it by themselves. But anyway, one thing for a father to help raise his daughter, one thing for a mother to raise her son. But when you are grown ass men and women, okay? You do not need another, if you're a grown ass man, you don't need or want a grown ass woman telling you how to be a grown ass man, all right? And likewise, if you're a grown ass woman, what does a grown ass, what, is a, what does a man have to do? What business does a man have telling you how to be a woman, how to be a wife? Now that would be completely different if we knew that this passage of scripture were written by a woman, but it would have read differently as well, okay? Y'all don't believe me? Go and watch um, Shahrazad, I'll put a link in the description box below. Watch Shahrazad Ali's video on how feminism destroyed the black community. That's the title of it, uh, how feminism destroyed the black community. That is a woman talking to other women. That's how it's supposed to be done. So this whole thing of husbands love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Oh no, I, I skipped too far ahead. Sorry. Verse 22, wives submit yourselves into your own husbands as unto the Lord. First of all, why is that word own in there? Like, I mean, what was going on in them churches in Ephesus or whatever the name of that city was? Anyway, let me say something. First of all, first and foremost, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. The apostle Paul was not married. Okay. The apostle Paul was not married. So who is he to write a letter to somebody and, 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 and dictate to a woman how she is to behave with her husband? All right. So that's the problem I got with the scripture part. Now, let me tell you from a practical standpoint where that causes a problem. People hear this word submission and submission has been used as a whip. It's been used as a whipping stick or oh, you need to submit because the Bible says you need to submit. Let me tell you something. Submission happens on autopilot. It happens automatically. You don't have to ask or tell somebody to submit. And the other problem with the word submit, let's look that up. See, because the word, the problem with the word, I told y'all English is the language of spells. There's a whole lot of spell casting in everyday English vernacular. Okay. Submit is a verb, which means accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person. All right. Let's go. We're just going to go with that one. We're going to go with the with the uh, first uh, first uh, definition there. Verb, accept or yield to a superior force or to the authority or will of another person. Now, that is not my idea of what a relationship. Let's throw the word marriage out. Y'all saw my video. I got a video out there called um, five reasons why the why marriage is a joke and and one of them the number one reason was the word marriage in and of itself is a spell it casts a spell that goes back to the word I said in the introduction expectation yeah you got certain things that you expect of people but those are inherent those are I expect respect okay if you can't respect me then keep it moving all right that 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 is an expectation in a relationship but these are things you find out about a person before you walk down the aisle so to speak which that whole process Look, I'm not even going to go. Stay. Let's stay focused, Matt. Let's stay focused. OK, um, expectations. So when it's in the scripture and we're supposed to be a Christian society. OK. Y'all y'all know how I feel about Christianity. Check my videos out. OK. When you're supposed to be a, a Christian society and, and to be a good Christian, you need to follow the Bible. And this is in there. This can cause a problem because it it, it creates a, an environment where it's like, well, you got to do what I said do because it's in the Bible. And this was written by a man who was not, who didn't have a wife. Okay. So how you, how you going to tell somebody how to be a wife and you ain't even a husband, right? All right. Let me stay focused. Let me stay focused. Submit yourselves into your own husbands as unto the Lord. 
Why do you have to tell? Why does a grown ass man got to tell a grown woman to submit like that? That go, again, the word submit is a problem because it says accept or yield to a superior force. Let's go to Genesis. What did he say in Genesis? Let's let's go to the book of Genesis real quick here. Y'all gonna learn. Y'all gonna learn today. Y'all, we gonna learn today. All right. Genesis one and uh, let's see, twenty seven. Genesis one and twenty seven. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. Okay? Stop, uh, 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 fire light to the side. Now, the seven chakras. We know that the seventh chakra is neither male nor female energy. I'm sorry, not male, female. Neither masculine nor feminine energy. We talking energy, not gender. Okay? You got six, not counting not count the seven, the seventh. You have six energy zones in your body that are stats okay and they alternate masculine at the root feminine next masculine solar plexus feminine heart masculine throat chakra feminine third eye chakra or perception all of these were created to work together in concert for your soul your soul is part feminine part masculine energy everybody i don't care if you male or female so does one dominate the other no now that being said, the masculine energy is at the root, but go look up what the root chakra does. The root chakra is your is your, your sense of safety and security. That's masculine energy. Now, right on top of that sits the sacral chakra. I'm not gonna do a chakra lesson. Let me get off of that, because I wanna wrap this video up. Now, if he created them male and female in the beginning, he created them equally, all right? They were created to operate in sync, in partnership not one dominating the other so when you hear the word submit it already creates an air of who are you talking to i ain't got to submit to you now let me show you what submission really looks like from a how long have i been married 28 year marriage veteran is that right 28 years yes 20 28 yeah 28 sorry um when you marry that long you got to start counting and anyway let me tell you what submission looks like because both both people in a in a good in a strong union both people submit without even thinking about it without even having to ask for it all right now i agree with what jazzy said there but I, i'm not i don't want to go in on that video i just wanted to use that as the basis to let you know how i came about doing this particular video today okay scenario wifey sitting in the living room um long day work whatever she's got off whatever we just finished dinner. She's sitting in the living room. She's watching her favorite gardening show on YouTube, all right? So she's sitting there. You know, Matt, Matt, Matt you know, I'm going to get up, go do my thing. I'm going to the kitchen. About to get me a cup of decaf, right? Hey, babe, what you about to do? I already know she about to. <laughs> she want to know what I got, right? What she want? What, what are you getting? What are you about to get out of the kitchen? I'm about to make a cup of coffee. Oh, can you make me one? <sighs> Please, you make the best coffee. Now I do the her uh, thing just to be a, just to be annoying, but yeah, I'm already gonna do it because she wants it. That's something that's gonna make her happy. She wants a cup of coffee, and she tells me all the time, "Look, you make the best coffee. You're like a barista not working at a coffee bar. You make the best coffee. Can you make me one too? I got you, babe. Boom. I bring her a cup of coffee out. I just submit it. I just submit it. That is what submission looks like. It, it's it's co-creation. It's submission. It's like, hey, babe, you out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you need? All right, so I'm about to make this salad, but we're out of cucumbers. Can you stop by the store and bring a cucumber home? I got you. Boom. That's submission. The problem is people use that for, again, I hope the kids ain't watching. People use that term. I've seen it used in, in tandem with sexual expectations. Now, let me say this. If, if you on your game, you ain't got to ask for no submission with that. Ever. Ever. It's going to happen. You probably, brothers, I'm talking to the men right now. If you on your game, you probably got to tell her, no, I don't feel like it today. I'm tired. <laughs> if you on your game, right? So if that is the case, are you asking? No. Now, if you are in a situation with somebody where you feel like, um, I got to ask this person to submit, or I got to tell this person they need to submit to me because that's in the Bible, then you with the wrong person. You, 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 you got with the wrong person. You pulled a bad card. You pulled a bad card. You walked in the wrong door, okay? You opened up the wrong curtain on The Price is Right or whatever, all right? If you gotta do that, 
it, submission should never submission should never even come into a conversation all right unless you're trying to break some old chains like this spell that's in the scripture right now that's a spell i'm gonna say it. it's a spell it's a spell i'm gonna call it what it is look at what it's done to our community you got a bunch of homes where first of all it, it, it begs the question why did you ask this person to marry you in the first place and this goes back to my we're not even doing marriage the way it's, it, it was intended to be done this whole marriage the way it's done now is a product of the church establishment the church establishment comes from the the the, the roman It's a product of the roman empire we know how wicked the romans were the romans switched from um, a polytheistic society to a monotheistic society why did you do that because it's going to help you control the rest of the world the roman empire it, it hadn't gone anywhere i say this in a number of my videos the roman empire has never the roman empire hadn't gone anywhere it just decentralized and instead of Roman legions and armies, they took over with Christianity and religion. So they're subduing now, instead of using swords, they're using words. Words cast spells. This passage of scripture, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna wrap this up. Before I do, I'm gonna go to the contrast. You should not, you should not have to, if if the term submission is coming into your conversation, if as a man I gotta have a submission conversation with my wife, I, I done picked the wrong person. I picked the wrong person. All right. Now it is. I will say this in the, in the interest of transparency. Y'all know I like to be transparent. Did we have issues early on in my 28 year marriage with my wife with regards to certain domestic duties? Yes, we did. But I'm gonna tell you why. That had to do everything to do with the fact that she and I are pretty much the same person in our respective households growing up. She she probably she'll probably you ask her she'll tell you she did dishes more than her brother. You ask me. I have four brothers and one sister. I did more dishes than all of them. And if, if, if anyone of my brothers watching this video, you want to you want to sound off in the comments right now, let's go at it because y'all know it's true. And my mother, if my mother's watching this and she comments, she will say, yes, he did help me in the kitchen more than anybody else. He helped me around the house more than anybody else. So when you get married and you're like, all right, man, well, you know, I ain't gonna have to do all that extra stuff now. And she like, huh, man, I ain't gonna have to do all that extra stuff now. Now you got a problem. But over the years, there, there came an understanding. Look, we both work long hours. If I come in the house first and there's something that needs to be done, I'm not gonna walk past it and wait for her to do it. And vice versa. You know what? He's tired. Let me, let me, let me, I'm tired too, but he's really tired. Let me, let me knock this out today. So that is submission without asking for it. Now we graduated to that, of course. But what I'm saying is if you gotta have this wall, this submission and this passage of scripture, you, you got problems already. And I think that that has has been a detriment to our communities because this scripture, this passage of scripture has been used by, dare I say, some unsavory fellows to browbeat their significant others. And you know what happens when you're browbeating someone, they start to resent you. And then before you know it, you got static in the house. When a woman's mad, she don't want to do nothing with you, bro. You already know that. There's some men when they mad, they ain't trying to do nothing with you. So now, yeah, look, man, she mad, she don't, oh, she don't want to give me none? All right, well, fine, then, blah, 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 blah. Now you got other problems. You see what I'm saying? But it all has to do with this word in here, this passage of scripture that says, submit yourselves to your husbands, to your own husbands. I still want to know why they said own. Like, was these wives in this church he was talking to submitting themselves to others? Anyway, as you read on through some of these letters that Paul wrote in uh, the Ephesians and Colossians, it is telling women, again, men telling women how to adorn themselves and how to look basically basic. I'm going to say that because I grew up in a... Um, I grew up in a Pentecostal holiness, Church of God of Christ type of scenario where the women look real basic. They, they, they couldn't wear no makeup, couldn't wear no pants, whatever, skirts all the way down to the ankles. That was my background. But you know what? I used to look at these women, I'd be like, oh man, when I grow up as a kid, I don't want nobody to look like that, man. I'm, when I go on the street, I see <laughs> I see the Debbies of the world, all right? There's this girl named Debbie that was, she uh, she lived in the uh, projects where my grandmother did, and when I was over there playing, um, Debbie and uh, she had a sister named Cookie, but Debbie was bad as a mother. Mm. Mm. Debbie come out there, that lipstick on the nail polish, and me and my cousin we used to like fight over. It's so funny, but anyway, um, um, I'm like, yeah, nah, Debbie, Debbie don't go to our church. I won't go whatever church Debbie going to, cause Debbie looks good, and she don't look basic. All right, so I say that to say, you know, again, men dropping these rules about looking basic, but then. Let me stop. Without further ado, let's go to the Old Testament refer uh, uh, reference that shows you how this really is supposed to look. Okay, that that's the wives submit yourselves to your husbands. All right, blah, blah, blah. All right, we're gonna we're gonna take a trip here to the book of Proverbs. That's where we're gonna go right now. We're gonna wrap this video up. Proverbs, y'all know what I'm going already. The 31st chapter. All right, 
This is the 30 This is the story of the virtuous woman. Let's drop down to the 10th verse. I'm going to read from the 10th verse through the end, okay? I'm going to read it fast. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil, no need to go get none nowhere else. That's what that means. Verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships that bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden's food. She considereth a field and buyeth it. She's a businesswoman. With the fruit of her hand, she planteth a vineyard. She works hard too. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth, strengtheneth her arms. So she's like, look, I ain't, gonna, I ain't just out here no dainty woman. I, I need to do some exercise so I can do what I need to do and be strong. Okay. Verse 18. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She keeping the candle. Superwoman here. I'm not your soup. Well, uh, wrong song. <laughs> anyway, she, verse 19. She layeth her hands to the spindle and her hand, her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. You know what that means? That's the, that's the fellas, when the fellas hang out. Yo, man, man, he got him a good one, man. I wish I had one like that. That's still happening. Them good husbands are known in the gates. Why? Because of the wife that they married to. Okay. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. That means she's, look, she ain't about that ish. All right. Y'all going to respect her. Strength and honor are her clothing. She's strong. She ain't putting up with nothing. And she's honorable. She ain't carrying herself in no, 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 no type of way. If you know what I mean. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So when she speaks, she's speaking wisdom, and she's showing you that fourth chakra energy, love, kindness. Okay, verse 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Means she ain't sitting around like not doing nothing. You know, I mean, she resting, she ain't resting, she ain't idle. She's like, okay, what, what, what do we got to do here? What's the mission? What's the plan? All right? A lot of Virgo energy in there. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, verse 28 her child arise her children arise up and call her blessed her husband also and he praiseth her he know what he got okay like cam newton right here not that they married but i'm just saying he ain't gonna mess that up if he does then you know cam bro come on anyway verse 29 many daughters have done virtuously but thou excellest them all she's the baddest of the bunch if a man and a woman have six daughters she the top of the food chain the other five ain't even close in comparison all right verse 30 uh, let me see 29 again many daughters have done virtuously but thou excellest them all favor is deceit and let me say this let me say this not only is she the baddest in her household she the baddest across three or four five six seven eight nine ten households that's the opposite that's the contrast that's in stark contrast let me finish this favor verse 30 favor is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised 31 give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates basically her own works praising her wherever she goes so that's the contrast to what we saw in ephesians 5 and 20 does does anybody does any single unmarried apostle need to come and tell this virtuous woman how to be no 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 now ask yourself how did this virtuous woman come about to be virtuous she was most likely trained in her youth or even if she wasn't trained to be virtuous, she was virtuous enough of a soul when she came here to pay attention to what the, the elder women were doing. Nobody had to teach her. She was paying attention. Let me watch and see. Okay, this is how she washes greens. Oh, this is how she washed the greens. Okay, this is how she cleaned them. She put them in a the pot. Okay, she put the temperature on this. Okay, um, this is what seasoning she's using. Okay, uh, let me see. She got the sewing machine out. She making clothes. Uh, wow, okay. So wait a minute. She ain't just sitting around house. She getting up, she's going to work. Oh, she bought, wait a minute. She didn't wait for her husband to buy a field. She went out with the intent to buy a field and she saw what she liked and she bought it. But she bought it with a purpose attached to it. She wanted to grow her own field, her own food. So she found some land 
purchased it, she considered it, she saw it, she was wise enough to know if the land was good and said, hey, that land is fertile. I wanna buy that plot of land. She bought the plot of land and she grew her own food for her family, her servants, employees, all of that. That's one bad, in a good way, woman. Now, do you think her husband has to ask her to submit? If she doing all of that, don't you think she ain't got no problem breaking him off either? I told you it's gonna be a little of an adult conversation. So, I want y'all to read that. Again, go check out that uh, Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31, okay? Read that, and then look at that in stark contrast to what's in Ephesians 5 and 22 through 24. You do not have to tell someone to submit. Okay, that that word, that phrase, that scripture needs to be thrown out of your vernacular. No man can tell a grown ass woman how to be a woman. You cannot. You can help raise your daughter when she's young. Hey, babe, look, this is how to do things. This is how this is how to get respect from the boys. I don't have any children. I got a, 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 a slew of nieces and nephews. When I'm dealing with the girls, I'm like, this is how you get respect for yourself from both boys and girls. This is how you listen. Don't let no boy run over you. This is how you. This is how to deal with a man, okay? And that, and I'm doing that in a way not so as to be, well, don't you put up with nothing for no man, girl. Blah, blah, blah. No, this is how you present yourself. The right attitude commands respect. It does not demand. There's a difference between demanding something. If I demand something from you, I'm asking you from it in a forceful way. I demand that you give me blah blah blah. That's a demand. But a command, a command is somebody that's got command of the whole situation. Your presence alone commands respect. When you walk in the room, they're gonna respect you just because of how you carry yourself. When you open up your mouth and speak, they're gonna respect you because of the, the way your words come out of your mouth, because of the way you carry yourself. You command respect. So when I'm working with my nieces and such, I'm showing them this is how you, this is how you build your character so that your character commands respect. So that by the time you're a woman, you ain't even got to deal with no, oh, well, I, I need a submissive woman. That don't even sound right. Go back to the dictionary de definition I put down there. I don't want somebody I got to give orders to. That's not fun. That's not fun. That's a servant. That's not a partner. You enter into a partnership when you're getting married. You're not entering into a, 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 a uh, forced servitude or some ish like that. So that's all I got for y'all family. Um, I gave you the scripture references. I told you what my problem with that is. That whole submission thing needs to be thrown out, okay? You don't have you don't ever have to tell somebody how to submit that they need to submit. You don't ever have to tell that. I gave you the example. My wife asked me for something. If it's within my power to do so, I do it. If it's not within my power to do so, I try to find out how I can make that happen for her. And vice versa. That is submission. That is submission without having to say the word submission. I'm submitting to her will because I love her. I think she's cool. I, listen, we submit to each other. You submit to your friends. I got friends that come in. Hey, Matt, man, can you come pick me up? Whatever. Uh, Yo, I need a ride. I need a lift. Yeah, man, I got you. Boom. I just submitted. We submit every single day without even knowing it. We submit. If somebody calls you and you look at your phone, see what it is, you answer the phone, you just submit it. That's some, why? Because that's somebody you want to talk to. But I'm just saying, we submit all the time. Nobody ever has to tell you to submit. I think that that was added in there for some nefarious reason. I think the people who put the Bible together made sure that went in there for some nefarious reason. Think about the time frame that the Bible as we know it today was was uh, was was put together in the uh, 17th century. That was very, very, very. Listen, y'all check out my video. Um, was the rise of the divine feminine uh, power and energy in the earth, um, was that prophesied? I'll put the uh, link in the description box below because that's in the Bible. The uh, divine feminine energy is we're seeing the existence goes, it moves and ebbs and flows. With the age of Pisces, we had the uh, rule of masculine energy. We about to have the rule of feminine energy. And that doesn't mean for y'all getting about to get up in your feelings, that doesn't mean, man, ain't no woman ruling over me. It ain't got nothing to do with male or female. I just told you that. It's not it got anything to do with gender. It's about energy. Matt, if you love somebody, that's feminine energy. All right? If you're speaking, that's masculine energy. If you're feeling self-confident, that's masculine energy. If you think you cute, if you think you sexy, that's feminine energy. There's some dudes that think they sexy. Now, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't trying to say that in no type of way. And I'm, I'm just saying, if you think you smooth, you in the mirror, when you cutting your hair to look good, that's feminine energy. If you look at it and say, man, I need a haircut, so you cutting your hair so that you can look good, that's feminine energy. 
I don't care if you like it or not. That comes from your sacral chakra. All right. If you're perceiving something or if you're speaking with wisdom, speaking and wisdom, that's a combination of two. The speaking part is uh, fifth chakra. That's that's masculine energy. But the wisdom is feminine energy. That's perception. That's that's the third eye chakra. <sighs> Listen, man, I hope you all like this video. I'm an award winning author. Um, you can check out the links uh, to what I've written in the description box below. And uh, there's some thumbnails to the books at the end of this video. I'll end this video like I do with them all. I want to tell you guys I love you. I thank you so much for your support of this channel and my work. Thank you so much. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Tell somebody you love them and mean it. How do you mean it? Simple. You show it. Love is an action word. Peace, y'all.